Hey everyone, welcome back. In this episode of Coffee Time, we're going to do a book review. And for those of you who are watching the first time, how it works is this is a collaboration with Pack Publisher, and whenever there's a new release of a title, they give me a copy, and then I review it, provide an honest feedback. Besides that, there's no monetary value. So hopefully, it will be useful information for you before you consider the book, and hope you enjoy the video. So, this new title that's released recently got a killer title, right? The title is Self-Taught Cloud Computing Engineer. And the author is Dr. Logan Song. Now, the funny thing is, this is actually the second book I reviewed with Pub Publisher on the same author. So this author has really just fantastic experience across the board. First of all, Dr. Logan Song is a cloud director and the chief cloud architect at Dill LLC, which is a Google partner company. And then on top of that, he has 25 plus years of experience in cloud computing, which I thought is amazing. He has held numerous degrees and certificates on AWS, GCP, which is Google Cloud Computing, as well as Azure. So this guy has been all over the places. And he's not just writing this book as a list of topics. He really has that industry knowledge, that industry experience, not just on one cloud platform, but across multiple different platforms. So I will say this book is really a culmination of everything out there that's valuable for you if you want to be a cloud computing engineer. And in some cases, I will say it probably can be considered textbook for people who want to get into the field and develop the cloud computing engineer career. So with that being said, let's jump into a couple of interesting topics that I have prepared for you guys today. So the book is structured focusing on three particular fields. First one, the book starts with AWS, Amazon Web Service, and then it dives into GCP, Google Cloud Platform. The last one is, of course, Azure from Microsoft. So here we are, we have one book covering the same kind of concept and topic, but across multiple platforms. The author is able to quickly delve into the concept, the definition, and then expand on what are a couple of the important modules out there on that platform, and at the same time, compare and contrast the pros and cons across multiple different platforms, which I thought it's extremely helpful for me personally, because I have spent a fair amount of time on Amazon Web Service, AWS, but I'm probably a beginner in GCP or Azure. So if I want to get in those fields, this book is what I consider the must have for me to bridge that gap from one platform to the other. So to talk about cloud computing, first things first, let's dive into AWS EC2 instance. And that's precisely what this book started. Part one, chapter one, let's talk about EC2. Let's talk about cloud computing. How do you deploy a service and potentially some sort of dashboard for your company, for your team onto EC2 instance so that everyone else in the company, your colleague, stakeholder, executive leaders can interact with whatever results that your model have been producing. So that's one quick way to start with cloud computing. And then, of course, you can talk about database, right? S3 on AWS is a famous database platform. And for professional use cases to develop in-house models, architect, you want to have everything built within the four walls of your company network, which then leads to the next chapter talk about virtual private network, VPC on AWS. These are all important things to know, right? You don't want to just build a chatbot and then hopefully that hey, this thing will work, and hopefully that this information is well protected, right? You don't really want to make that assumption. The information is protected because you build that VPC. The information is protected because your IP address is protected. So all these things need to be designed, need to be hand-wired by engineers. And this book help us bridge that gap and help us understand what that architect looks like. And then, of course, let's not forget, today is really a data-centric world. So all of the data analytical platform out there, QuickSight, Athena, let's not forget these things, right? And that's precisely what the author did. After database, after VPC, let's talk about Athena. Let's talk about QuickSight. All these things can be used for data analytical tools, data analytical environment. And if you want to be a cloud computing engineer, you better be able to know these things like the back of your hand. So all of this consists of the major part of part one, which is Amazon Web Service. 
And then similar modules, similar topics, the authors then bring into GCP, Google Cloud Platform, as well as Azure from Microsoft, which I thought is interesting. Because me personally, I haven't really spent a lot of time on Google Cloud Platform, except the time when I get the API key from Google Pond. Other than that, perhaps I didn't really spend a lot of time on Vertex AI. So it's interesting to see immediately after talking about Amazon Web Service, the author is then delving into Vertex AI, which is a cloud service on GCP, which is actually quite fascinating. It shares similar concept, similar structure, but I actually think the user interface on GCP might actually be a little bit more friendly. So we're talking about different pipelines, model monitoring on Vertex AI, as well as explainable AI. And you log into GCP, these tools are all there, which I thought is fascinating. And if you want to be a cloud computing engineer developing some front-end application, I think GCP is a great way to get yourself started. And not only that, right? Google Cloud Computing is, of course, built with the backend of TensorFlow, which me personally, I love a lot. On the virtual machine of Google Cloud, I actually think TensorFlow is building in a much more user-friendly way than its two competitors. So that's kind of like a take for me after I read this book, which is to get that pros and cons, get that contrast. And that's something I truly found fascinating. And then in the end, of course, you have Azure. Nowadays, because of the launch of OpenAI, launch of ChatGPT, I think Azure had a lot of the development, a lot of the push on Gen AI or Copilot that really makes coding and model developing really convenient for the developers out there. And I would say, yeah, even though that uh, on Colab, you actually have the Colab version of the autopilot or Copilot, uh, I actually think that the outcome as well as the co-production from Azure is beating the other competitors. So if you're some software developer of some sort of software applications out there and you're looking at Copilot and that's really something that you're looking for, I will say Azure probably have a little bit of upper hand in that phenomenon. And me personally, I kind of get a feeling before I read a book, but not actually I read a book. I thought that's something interesting and it's definitely worth to point out. But of course, that's just my feeling, right? Please leave your comment if you feel like Colab has a better Copilot, or if you feel like AWS has better Copilot. I think they're rolling out general availability for AWS to have some sort of Copilot as well. Although me personally, I found the Azure Copilot is actually a little bit better use and the outcome of the code is a little bit higher quality. So with that being said, that's all of the topics on a high level that I want to discuss. And in the end, I just want to land on the last chapter, which I found fascinating because the author actually shared a little bit of his own cloud story. That's his personal experience when he's developing his career with the audience. So a couple of things from that chapter I want to talk about is number one, communication. Now, of course, Communication, everyone's talking about it. It's on job description. It's probably on lots of people's resume. But what the author is really talking about here that is crucial of the communicational skill as a cloud computing engineer is really about how do you translate the idea. It's not just about making a cool presentation, right? It's also about communicating the idea to stakeholder. And the same time, it goes both ways, right? Whatever stakeholder says may or may not be understandable. You got to translate, you got to interpret their ideas down to something concrete, something clear enough that's well-defined such that you can turn into some sort of system architect diagram. So that's really about communicational skills, which I found very important from reading that last chapter. And then the next thing is about collaboration and teamwork, which is also very important when it comes to cloud computing. Because think about it, at today's scale, it's very difficult to architect an entire solution just by one person. Now, of course, for the experienced guys, they certainly can give a shot, but in most applications, it's put together by a team of engineers. And most likely, they're at different level in terms of experience. So we better be able to have a common language to be able to work together, whatever that is, right? Maybe it's Jenkins, maybe it's Git flow control, maybe it's some sort of CI CD platform that a team agreed to use. So whatever that form is, whatever that language is, 
the teamwork needs to happen. And of course, as you imagine, the more coherent the team work together, the more successful and more efficient this project will be. And above all, there are so many other factors that the author lists that I probably don't have time to cover in this video. One last thing I want to mention is continuous learning and the curiosity for continuous learning, which the author shared a paragraph in the last chapter that I thought is very interesting. And it kind of shares with my own personal philosophy of keep doing these book reviews, keep reading these titles. Uh, some of these knowledge I may or may not come across if I don't really take a look at the title, don't really take a look at the table of contents. And the reason I'm saying that is because sometimes even just skimming through the table of contents can probably be helpful because the more you read about these kind of topics, the more likely it will spark that interest. You will have that light bulb moment. And if you have that light bulb moment, then guess what? You have the passion, you have the interest, it's easier to learn. So with that being said, I hope you guys like the book review. Hopefully this shared a good amount of information about this title with all of you. And if you guys enjoyed the video, give a like and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.